Hello out there and welcome to my DIY recirculating sluice box. Um, so quick run through on this setup. Uh, Pre-existing sluice box, two sections, four riffles, rubber mat. Down there there's the big grates and the little grates. And then there's a uh, mesh and miner's moss. So I mounted this on a big plastic tub. Drilled some holes there, put a couple platforms you can see right here. And same on the other side and a block to create some height uh, uh, difference. Get some slope on the sluice box. Put in a splash guard. Um, and then up front, I'll show you what's going on here. I got an aquarium pump down in there. It's actually um, probably just the cheapest, easiest way to do this. Pumps it out. 750 gallons per hour, I think. Something like 30 bucks, not too bad. A little wooden, sort of three-footed thing here I rigged up so I could take the tubing and carry it up over here. It's got a plug on the end, and I just drilled a bunch of holes to let the water in. Um, the flow's a little uneven, but uh, I'm not trying to win a beauty contest here, so I'm just going to try running it and see if this is functional. And if it is, I'll know that I should keep improving it little by little. Um, one thing I'm going to do while it's warming up is I'm going to drip in a little bit of some old soapy water. And the reason I do that is because fine gold actually uh, can achieve a little bit of surface tension. And... Plenty of people will tell you that it'll just ride down the sluice box. Sometimes it'll end up in your tailings just because it managed to hop its way over the riffles and down there. So put in a few blebs of some old soap with water. Let that kind of make its way around and it reduces the surface tension of the water and it makes it more likely that you can capture those fine particles and that they'll hydrate more quickly when you feed them in you know, over here. Um, so, I'm going to gather my things and we'll be back when we're ready to feed this. Alright, so, I'm back. I've been running this for about 10 minutes now. It appears to be totally self-contained. It's not dripping other than initially all this water came from when I was testing it, going back and forth with some ideas, trying to waterproof it. Um, so what I did after, you know, putting in your standard sluice box that you get, you know, wherever, they all have this little funneled thing here on the front and then the first section. Uh, and I took a strip of rubber and I screwed it in there between these two uh, screw-in points just to prevent or discourage water from going down there. Seems to be working. Up front, um, I just used one by twos, built a little platform, drilled a hole in the metal and a hole in the wood and zip-tied them together on both sides. So, you know, that's just pretty simple standard stuff. You know, just drill a hole, zip tie it. Like I said before, I'm, you know, not trying to win a beauty contest, just trying to run some dirt here. And uh, this is the dirt I'm gonna start with today. Uh, it's been pre-screened, so I removed anything over roughly sand-sized particles, um, so I can run a consistent feed size through the sluice. And this ore has already been milled and screened. It came out of the Rogue River Valley in Oregon. And uh, the Rogue River is, um, you know, a historic mining district. It's not a major producer or anything, but there's a lot of small miners out there still making it. And I'm lucky enough to have about five buckets of one of their uh, ground up ore samples. We're gonna see how much gold is in there. All right, so I'm sitting here. We got our bucket with the uh, ore in it. Chunk that up a little so it's ready to go into the sluice box and break apart kind of quickly. And we got the sluice running. Seems to be running pretty well. Um, it might need a little bit more tilt, but we're gonna run some feed and see how it goes. Stuff in here. Looks to me like it's you know running pretty well. It's not perfectly even, but I'm not putting a huge volume of 
feed through here where it needs to be run, you know, as as efficiently as it could possibly be run. Um, it just needs to work well enough to capture the gold and uh, yeah, got some chunkies in there. I guess uh, this has been sitting in the bucket for a little while, and I guess some, some things have kind of re, uh, you know, kind of started to form little balls. They're breaking apart, and it looks like this is running pretty well. Uh, you may notice in the background here my gold finishing table, and I'll make another video where I show you that. Um, I have a whole gold processing setup in my shop that I'll make another video on. Uh, back here I've got equipment to crush rocks, grind them up. Uh, I have a homemade ball mill to make feed for the sluice box. And so what I do is I run the sluice and then the gold finishing table. You can see a bunch of tailings over here in this bin already. And uh, I'm working on concentrating gold. So I'm going to feed this for a little bit and then we'll check back in and see how it's looking. All right, I've been running some feed for a little bit. You can see it's kind of choking up a little. Um, it's got some clay balls in it. Those clay balls are a real nuisance in basically any gold ore processing operation. In a high dollar setup, you'd have a you know two, three stage wet crushing circuit and a closed circuit grinding mill. Take care of all those you know real ultra fine particles before they have a chance to clump up in my bucket here. So I'm just checking that this is running, you know, as well as it's going to be. It's level here on the top, and it's uh, not really looking too level down here on the bottom. No, uh, oh, no, that's good. All right, so uh, throughput's a little low, but hey, it's running. It's looking good, and uh, I had to shim it up a little bit more over here just to level it off. But uh, hey, we're running, and we're working for some gold. Let's see what we find been running for a few more minutes and I noticed that uh, it's spraying pretty heavily to one side. That's probably because all of the holes that are drilled in this plastic tubing are at a slight angle because as you can see they're coming out that way. So I'm going to have to go back and round those off a little bit, get a more even spray. You can see how there's sediment building up on the left side. It's running well on the right. Uh, but there's quite a big difference in flow on the rubber mat. You would want the sediment to be going to the left side, and it's a little too aggressive here on the right. So it's a balance, give and take, and you got to practice your sluice and go back and forth with it. And once you get it finally set up, my advice is don't move it. Run. Make hay while the sun shines. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try running it pretty hard. What I notice is, you know, the water and the sediment is marching through these riffles pretty nicely. There's a good drop zone right after the riffle there where you can see that pocket where gold would be captured by the little metal riffles and then the minor moss. So let's, uh, let's do some feeding. Let's see how much it can handle, how much can wash down. You can see a little bit of that sediment seems to be above the splash zone. Probably gonna have to get like a water little spray bottle or something to squirt that back down into the sluice. But um, it looks like it can soldier through a pretty good amount of sediment here. Um, and so I'll take you through this little setup down here. This is all just recirculating water in here. Tailings are building up on this front side here. The pump is over in the back side as far away from that as possible. And it's sitting inside of a Tupperware so that it's uh, a little insulated from the uh, sediment bed load in the tank because you, you, know, you don't want to run too much sediment through your tank, or sorry, through your pump. So you can see in the tubing here, um, yeah, it's got, it's got a pretty good bit of sediment in it, but it's flowing healthily, and uh, you got some clay balls in there again, which uh, normally you'd take care of in a wet crushing circuit. But, uh, well, you know, I'm working on that. Right now I'm just trying to run all the ore that I've got in here. And uh, some of it has to be milled. And in another video I'll show you my grinding mill. But uh, for now we're going to finish off this bucket and then I'll check in with you about what I see in the riffles there. Alright, we're back. We ran the whole bucket, waiting for some of this to work its way through. 
Um, as you can see, there were tons of uh, finds in that feed. Water's about as dirty as you could get it. So I can't really see what's going on in these riffles. I mean, I can see that there are particles trapped in them, but I, I can't tell you if they're gold or not. So the plan is to keep it running. I got a couple more buckets and eventually it's all gonna go onto my gold finishing table here. It's a little mini Miller table. Water goes across the top. Gold kind of sticks to the green there. That'll be a different video. I'll show you that. But um, yeah, there we go. DIY recirculating sluice. All you need is a pump, piece of tubing, a couple pieces of wood, a little bit of hardware, a drill, and uh, you could be off to the races. And if you stay tuned, I'll show you how to make a rock crusher, a ball mill. I'll make some videos about hard rock prospecting, how to find this stuff and get it to the finished product. So stay tuned. See you next time.